What's up, Lemon Heads? Welcome back to another episode of From the Yellow Chair. I'm Emily. And I'm Crystal. And we are going to embark on a little series of next level branding, how to take your brand to the next level. And so today we're going to specifically focus on your internal branding and utilizing that with your team. Right. So lots of ways to take your brand to the next level. Um, but personally, like we've gone through some internal things uh, for several of our clients and we really wanted to share about those today. So let's sip some lemonade. Let's do it. All right. So when we talk internal marketing, it's always one of those things like, oh, here we go again where Crystal and Emily are asking us to spend money. We are. Um, but it's one of the best places um, to spend money that I also think is a little underrated. Sure. Yeah. You know, the, uh, the last forgotten piece of your own team and getting their buy in and on board, like making them become your advocates and believing in the mission and vision and values. And if they're not doing it, then no one else will. Yeah. And, you know, like when you're when you want to learn a foreign language, they say the best way to do that is to immerse yourself in mm -hmm. the language, like abroad programs and things like that. So it's the same situation, whether you are in a tiny office, a warehouse, it doesn't matter. You need your team members and even your yourself to be surrounded with who you are as sure, people. Sure. So even like Lemon Seed Office, hardly any of our clients come to our office on a consistent basis. Yeah, very rarely. During our conference, they might come in and, and see it or if they happen to be driving through this area or something. But we we are decked out in there. Sure. Like we spent a lot of time and energy and effort into how do we make our office where we actually come to work every day? How do we make that a creative space, a collaborative space, but where we can still work really hard, but it looks very much like the lemon seed office. Like you walk in there you're like, oh yeah, I can definitely tell this lemon seed mm -hmm. um, just with how we decorated it, the signage that we put up, um, the things we want to be constantly reiterating. Um, it very much feels like a part of us. If we were to drastically move and just go work out of a different, be like, eh, this isn't right. Yeah, yeah, we're missing something. Yeah, and people come in, they're like, oh my gosh, this looks so fun. And it is fun. It is fun. Um, but we um, we used a lot of thinking, and I say we, Emily really is the creative mind behind those things. So we collaborated together, like, what do we want our team to know and feel and do and experience? And then, you know, you have to bring them to life. So again, to take your brand to the next level, what are some things that we can do to constantly expose our own team? And so one of those things that I think is a great place to start is the mission, vision, and core values. So a lot of you get sick of hearing that, but we had to stop mm -hmm. a year ago, uh, a little bit more than a year ago now, and like define those things for lemon seed because, like, man, we really need to practice what we preach here. Um, so we sat down and, and created what we feel like are, is a really good mission, vision, and core value, core, list of core values. So, but the best thing I think we did is number one, we related those to our brand of who we are. So mm -hmm. like our core values are zesty. It's an acronym for zesty. Yeah. yeah. So that was, so we had to change a little bit of the words, but at the end of the day, it was the same meaning that we were getting across. Yeah. And then one thing that I love, cause like mission, vision, and values can often just take a backseat. It's like, I mean, like that doesn't affect my day-to-day -day doing mm -hmm. of anything. Like, oh, I'll, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Um, but in reality, like we had this come up where we were having to have a hard conversation with an employee. And one of the biggest talking points was like, hey, you are not being a servant-minded advocate. That is the S of our zesty acronym is a servant-minded advocate. And it, it really gave us um, some ground to stand on in what could be just kind of like a, a wishy-washy, like it wasn't mm -hmm. a complete performance thing. Like, yes, she was still getting her tasks done on on time and still meeting deadlines for these things. But it was like, hey, but your attitude and how you work with the other teammates isn't part of our core values. And so it gave us a leg to stand on. Um, and it it kind of hit home with her like, hey, this is how we are going to do business yeah. because we are limited. See, this is what's important well, to us. Well, you know, you say like, oh, well, those people just don't fit your culture. Well, what is your culture? So basically yeah, your yeah. mission, vision, and core values is going to kind of set the tone for that. So servant-hearted, uh, servant-minded advocates advocates yep. is, a, is a good representation. Like, I have always, and then I knew, when I met Emily, she's very, very similar in this. We we wake up every day like looking to serve, not just ourselves, of course, but or our husbands, our kids. But we're trying to serve our employees and we're trying to serve our team members at the same time. So we fully expect our own team to be servant minded, meaning mm -hmm. your job is to serve. So if you have a problem literally serving people, meaning like you, you do what they ask you to do for the most part within reason, then this is not going to be for you. If you want to bark orders or mm -hmm. you want to be this big delegator, then this is just not going to be the place for you because we're a collaborative and um, more servant minded place. So that was a really good example. And, you know, I feel like 
it, the reason that it takes it next level, what I would consider next level is people say, oh my gosh, we love everyone from your team. Mm -hmm. Well, number one, we are selective about who goes out in the community. Yeah. Um, we're selective about who we take to shows. Not that I'll be honest, anyone from our team could go to any shows. I'll be, I would say that all day long. I think the goal here though, is we've identified like who embodies the spirit mm -hmm. of who Lemon Seed is. And we work hard at that. And even, even identifying things like yellow, right? Yeah. So if you walk into the Lemon Seed office, there is no, no doubt in your mind that yellow is our predominant color. And when we go to shows, yellow is our predominant color. And so we talk a lot about yellow well, and sometimes like we can get started like oh gosh another i have to buy another yellow shirt or something like sometimes we're so inundated in it that we're like ah, oh, let's do something different but in reality like that is a signature thing and like if we're not wearing yellow at a show like people are upset like yeah. where's your yellow yeah. like, are you not on the team you're not a team player and i'm like if y'all only knew yeah how hard it is to um, find but Damn. like when you can kind of find that signature thing. so like we just had to teach ourselves like embrace it like so we don't wear yellow like we're not at a show that often we save it for only the show times and stuff yeah. but yeah it is um, it, you are gonna have a hard time catching me in a yellow shirt here because uh, they are saved for travel <laughs> but the mission vision and core values what i like to encourage contractors here is Look at your brand. So if you've had this really cool brand created, how can you now push that over into your mission, your vision, and your core values and have it reiterate and play into the same brand? Get some posters. We have actual nice, like, what is the material of our signs? PVC. Half-inch PVC. So it's it stands off the wall. It's very, it's very, it looks very durable signage. It is very durable signage. Yeah. <laughs> but it looks really good. It helps when you're married to a signage guy. Yeah. Um, but we have some good signage up in there, but you don't have to go that elaborate. Like you literally could get just a poster print of it. You could get an sure. eight by ten of it. I mean something to get it posted so that your company, your team members are constantly exposed to those things. So we have a roofing client that's local to us that's a newer client on our team, but she is in our town. And so um I went to Emily because I work on this account personally. And I went to Emily and was like, we really need to do something cool on this wall. And so what did you come up with? Well, I was like, why are we not putting roofing shingles on this wall? And they're like, what? We never thought about that. You're I'm so like, smart, Emily. I'm like, <laughs> to me, that's like the easiest thing. But like one, it provided some like actual texture. So it makes that wall like visually interesting. Um, it is their actual product. And it's just like reinforcing what they do in, in a creative way. Um, and so, yeah, we, we had them shingle the whole wall and then we put some cool pvc signage on top of it like it kind of stands off the the texture and stuff um but we made those signs out of their core values which was an acronym for shell so they have an, an armadillo as their mascot and so they are known for their hard sturdy shells of protection and so that's where we built our acronym around on there and it's um so it's very unique and when people come into there it's like it's a talking point right off the bat and it just gives them something of how they can connect to m, m roofing like why they are choosing them over any other roofing company and you know she's a fairly young company she acquired the company and like when we got when i got the company um it was just very it was very simplistic just like you would think just like hvac and plumbing companies you know somebody's dad said oh you know what'll work m, &M. my name's mike your name's michael let's be m, &M yeah. roofing you know <laughs> um and so we kind of took that took that challenge and um rebranded them created rufus the armadillo and she went all in now she, she has invested she in this and i i say this which y'all gonna y'all probably gonna laugh at this like she's my favorite type of client because she, she don't really question Crystal. she did not no <laughs> and that was what i think what one thing that made it so successful she's like y'all say to do this i'm doing that yes you know? so i'm like hey we need to get a mascot it's going to be you know six thousand dollars done and i'm like what do you think about rufus love it so you know it was mm -hmm. just very creative and she's she knows that she's front loading her investment. Sure. Um, and then we're we're slowly but surely, even now, we're kind of dialing back some of our things, but we're all about bu building collateral, other collateral pieces, which is going to be another ser one of the series is that we're going to uh, offer. And one of the episodes in this series that we're talking about now is going to be around collateral. But so we did that. And then, you know, I said, hey, you know, what's really important is that we start building your mission, your vision and core values. And so I kind of interviewed her and then we sat down and wrote those things. And so when she was trying to design this office, we were like, you know, you need to put this up in front. And her team was so excited to work on that. Mm, yeah. Um, and I use acronyms a lot so that I can memorize. And so um, she used that same concept. And so it was a really cool place, but she also went ahead and posted her mission and her vision on the wall um, in the, in the main area of her, 
of her office. I've also been to several shop tours. Those of you that tour a lot of shops where they have just like banners hanging up in the warehouse that say like the best team in East Texas, right? The best comfort advisors in Louisiana, you know, so what could you do to really like accessorize? I know that sounds so corny, but. Sure. Well, like you want people to be proud to come to your office and and excited to come to work there and stuff. And so um, I think just kind of like touting, how great you actually are. And again, this is us suggesting that you spend more money, but like having actual swag items that have um, your company, you know, what you guys are proud of, like your team will become proud to wear those apparel items, to take that cup and stuff. And then like giving them access to get it where their kids can wear a lemon seed shirt. Their kids can wear an M&M roofing shirt. And like, you know, when they go to school, they have some pride too. Like my mom works at M&M roofing, you know, like yeah. when when you can give them the resources and allow them to show that progress, like we don't need no shirts. We, yeah. we ain't mess, w- wasting money on that. We or well, yeah. Contractors will be like, they don't need no shirts. They don't need no hats. They don't need keychain and stickers. Like again, all that is fluffy. If you will, I'm doing fluffy air quotes, <laughs> Um, but they're little kind of intangible things that you're not going to see a direct ROI from, but it does help build up the morale Details. and the culture and the spirit of the company. Yeah. The buy-in. Yeah. You know, so, you know, um, we use a certain company, Sticker Mule. And when you get products from Sticker Mule, there's going to be two things in that box. A big old picture of a donkey and a what? A, a jar of hot sauce. Jar of hot sauce. Their mule sauce. 1,000. We have 1,000 of them. Yes. <laughs> but it's it's kind of a thing. It's like who they are. And, uh, you know, they, they could look at cost cutting and be like, you know what we're going to stop doing is sending out the hot sauce. Mm-hmm. You know what they would probably get the most feedback around? Where's the hot sauce? Where's my hot sauce? And so I just, when you take your brand, let's say you have a dog, right, as a mascot or some sort of inclusion in your office. Why do you not have you know, ac- access, um, accessibility to like, uh, to dog treats or like, sure, Hey, yeah, take home yeah. dog treats or let everybody have a big board where there's pictures of all of their dogs. And Hey, we know you had a rough summer, you know I mean? <laughs> all, but all of that corny stuff, let them participate in giving back to animal shelters. Like your company take an afternoon where y'all go and play with the dogs at the animal shelter. That's how you expand your brand and that's how you get buy-in from your existing team members because there's nothing harder than to sell your own team on who you are. Mm, mm. And uh, we were kind of laughing about this earlier because we were trying, we always try to get better. So we were looking through some things and, and um, you know, when you, when you brand yourself something that isn't your true self, it's hard because really you're telling somebody else's made up story. Mm, yeah. And I'm not saying, now listen, let me say, I'm not saying that you can't add a little fluff to your existing story. There, there's fictional stories. Yeah. It's a whole well, segment yeah, in the I library. Mean, <laughs> yeah. There's ways to get you there. But what's really more impactful is really discovering something in your mm-hmm. life yeah. as an owner that helps tell a story. So, you know, even things like I was thinking the other day, like even like where your grandparents are from, Mm. you know, so is that a play or an animal that you had growing up or something that your dad did or said? And there's lots of things like, honestly, when anybody says, well, my grandpa started the business, I start off, did he wear anything special? Did he say anything special? Did he have a pocket watch, a handkerchief, a conductor's hat? Did Mm -hmm. he drive a train? Like what all did he do? Did he fly planes? Did he fix cars? What, because all of that information really helps you build out your true authentic story versus you calling me and us saying, you know what you need to do? You need to do a polar bear. I know you don't have a freaking clue about a polar bear, but you should do a polar bear. And we're going to make it this whole fictional story. Will it work? It will. Mm -hmm. It will probably work fine, but it's not a true authentic story. So you kind of have to. And you're probably going to have a little bit harder buy-in on it. Yeah. Where did this come from? What the heck is this polar bear? You know, but when we introduced like Sailor Mac from McWilliams, it was like, hey, all of you know Mac, right? My grandfather. And like, oh, yeah. Well, this is who. Oh, my gosh. I mm-hmm. love it. Mm-hmm. You know? And um, just automatically the buy-in is better. So I encourage you guys to look into that and then incorporate him. So, you know, another another thing that I, I think through here is like even uniforms and things like that. So if you have a really upscale-looking brand, I would assume that you're going to look upscale when you get out of the van. Sure. Do not be wearing shorts just a t-shirt like have them wearing like a actual some type of button up or a polo or something which i find it funny emily said shorts so i ha- there was a contractor and i cannot remember exactly who it is but i want to say they were in florida and their uniform is shorts and everybody at this show i was at was like there's no way i would let my guys wear shorts well the name of his company was kind of like 
relax AC or something like that. Mm. So he was like, it's kind of part of who we are. So, you know, my branding mind was like, oh, I kind of get it. But my safety mind was like, y'all trying to get burned up and on the job injury. Mm -hmm. So no, thank you. Well, but. And you're right. If it could be a part of your brand story, like I'm actually thinking we're doing one that's kind of a, they want a kind of Hawaiian vibe. And I'm like, that actually would be kind of fun. Like they're wearing some like Hawaiian, almost like surf shorts. Board their, shorts. Yeah. Board shorts as their actual uniform. So Shorts might well, be heck, in your brand Just story, let them come but, to work in flip flops and lace, like <laughs> sure. visors. But then also, like if you're trying to be relaxed as you're, you know, heating and air conditioning coming, don't be all stiff and stuffy, like in your uniforms and you know, mm -hmm. in your overall vibe and how you talk to people on the phone. Like it may not have to be like the most exact professional regimented robot voice, but it could be like a little bit like aloha, you know, a little bit yeah. more friendly wording. Yeah, I mean. And, so uh, let's talk about that. So what you might do is when you launch your new brand, let's say it's called Aloha Heating and Air Conditioning, which that is, I think, the name of some companies. You know, maybe everybody gets a Hawaiian shirt and maybe mm -hmm. everybody gets a lay. The day you announce it, like mm -hmm. everybody's getting these really beautiful lays and you figure out like you've got tiki music playing in the background. Like you really run, run to the brand, sure. run into the brand so that the team is automatically you know, buying into that. And then you tell the story like my husband and I got married in Hawaii or it was our favorite place to vacation as children. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it sounds like you had a bougie childhood, but that's fine. But, you know, <laughs> well, I mean, my family, we vacationed in Hawaii, but because my grandmother was from there, you know, and yeah, so, so like, see, it tells she has Hawaiian art like in her house and stuff. And like, that's something that's very important to her. When we had her 75th birthday party, we brought in Hawaiian food, you know, because that, that was her favorite. So and basically like, mayonnaise and spam, but yeah, it's like, well, well, I mean, <laughs> to each their own, no, no, no um, hard feelings there. The Hawaiians that are listening yeah, to your yeah. spam and mayonnaise, but you know, again, it goes to the fact of like, you set the tone. Sure. So when we talk about next level branding, it will be, it kind of separates the men from the boys, mm -hmm. right? So the real, the real people that are buying into a brand are going to make sure that their team is on board first through doing these extra little things. And it's, and it's more than just st saying, here's our new look and feel yeah. investing in those shock, like the wow factor and the buy-in factor and launch parties and things like that. I just think there is so much power to those. And then, and then also like, even like, um, and employee portals or like an area where they mm -hmm. get all their information. I would name it something like the Aloha station sure. or, you know, Sailor Mac communication center, like somewhere where you're going to put all their information, whether it's a digital portal or a, 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 a um, what do you call it? A cork board type thing, you know, owning those locations. Well, and, and I think the main thing here is you just have to be the, very intentional to define it, to define what your brand is, um, to define what your culture is. Because if you're not, they will, your mm -hmm. employees will, they are setting a tone. They are setting a culture. They are setting a brand, whether how good it is or not, um, that is run amok, if you will, or mm -hmm. that has no strategy and consistency and anything. So you have to be the one to define it. If you're not defining it, something or someone else is. Yeah, one, one star review where they try to rip you apart will define it for mm -hmm. your team. Um, so that's some internal things. The last internal thing that I'm going to visit on a little bit about your brand is, and, and I see people uh, struggling with this right now, is like buying into your offers, mm. going into the the thing. So some of you don't do offers, that's fine. But a lot of you are like, man, I, you know, I really need to do something unique and stand out, blah, blah, blah. Well, what that's going to be about is <laughs> that's going to be where you end up telling everyone on your team, like, hey, for Q1, we're giving away you know, ring doorbell sets and each of you, after you sell five systems, you get your own ring doorbell set, right? Like getting people in, but then what, how does that reflect back to your brand mm -hmm. and who you are and what your specials are and social media and things like that? And so again, to take your marketing next level and your branding fully next level, I really feel like internal is a really good place to start. So I want you to stop and I just want you to look at your company visually is your office space, your trucks, is the inside of the vans, is the break room, warehouse, whatever your facilities look like, do they match your brand? And if they don't, what are some cost-effective ways to start introducing the brand into those locations? I mean, another easy one is just like, you know, we all have like employee of the month or, you know, some things like that. But like you could even like name 
you know, awards that you give out in your company or like, what do you call your review? So like we had a client that's kind of exploring like a musical theme and brand. And so like, we wanted to call their reviews, like their standing ovations. Mm. And, um, you know, here at Lemonsey, we wanted to get some client testimonials. So like, you know, Rachel here thought, she's like, what if we named it Zestimonials? It's like, yeah, we're like, yes. <laughs> uh. Um, but you know, maybe if you have like in your character, he's, he has a waving hand in your um, branding or something like maybe you call those your high fives or something. So, so it's, you even could do that like with naming your own team, like the mm -hmm. comfort crew or the, the blue crew. Yes. Yeah. I mean, all those things, guys, what we're trying to get you to understand is like some of this costs $0. Sure. Sure. Some of this cost is a more investment signage, wall wraps, things like that's more of an investment. But honestly, at the end of the day, it's about the intentionality behind it. It's about, making sure that your team really buys in. So if you're not bought into your brand, that's where you got to start. Mm -hmm. But then eventually getting your team bought in and really launching some cool stuff so that internally everyone bleeds your brand. Yeah. Yeah. I so, mean, sports fans are some of the biggest examples of, you know, brand buy-in. Um, and so, yeah, I think you could take a lot of inspiration from that. You know, so again, I live in the Bible Belt, but you know, some people like one of one group that I think does a good job with this is like churches. Now, remember, I live in the Bible Belt, so everybody calm down. But you will see people now like if, if they are very involved in their churches, like they become like brand ambassadors mm -hmm. for their own churches. And that's what it's I mean, I, I some of that's like I mean, this is a great brand loyalty. Like these mm -hmm. people are loyal. And what it is is. The churches, they've created an identity and a place of belonging. And so there's, it's the same concept with a company. Like one of the, let see, just like every other company, we have people leave for better options, mm -hmm. not always on super great terms. Like maybe they weren't performing. Maybe the job wasn't what they thought. So, but one of the things that always makes me proud in their offboarding interview, which is one of the things that's important to us is an offboarding interview. And yes, you take it, you take a gut punch sometimes mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. We failed them there or we knew that was coming. But honestly, one of the proudest things that Emily and I talk about this is most of the time people say, I absolutely adored the culture that we had at Lemon Seed. Mm -hmm. um, now, we've got other things we always need to work on, just like everybody else. But culture, a lot of times, and it's because we really try to embody servant-minded advocates yeah. for our own team. So I just encourage you here, guys. So you can take your brand next level with some intentionality with some purpose mm -hmm. and with very little financial investment. And you really can take it to the next level with some good financial push behind it. Yeah. So, well, thank you guys for listening to us. This was series. This was part one. This is going to be a three part series um, coming really soon. So, Make sure you stay tuned because we think there's at least two other ways that you can take your brand to the next level that are a little bit non-traditional ways. And so um, if you've enjoyed listening to Emily and I, which it should be your favorite thing to do every day is listen to Crystal and Emily. <laughs> I know it's our husband's favorite things. If you've listened this far, we must be doing something right for you. <laughs> yeah. So we would love to see a, a review from you or a nod on social media. Uh, we love seeing you when we're out and about at shows. So make sure you come up and tell us hi. But thank you for listening to another episode of From the Yellow chair. We'll see you next time. Bye.